Moving on from that one, we got some sad, sad, sad news regarding the Jay Slater disappearance. Unfortunately, according to several news outlets, there has been some remains found in the area around where people think Jay Slater may have passed away or may have gone missing, sorry. And people are now basically saying through hushed tones and rumors and stuff online that most likely the body that was found there was Jay Slater because I think they've been able to confirm maybe belongings, maybe DNA or something. But that's basically where we're at the moment. And um, I'm not going to lie, it's really sad. As much as I was entertaining conspiracy theories and getting into the weeds of all that and laughing at the situation part of me generally wanted him to have been abducted somewhere taken somewhere left in the house somewhere or be found in the cave somewhere i really wanted to be found and even if it was revealed later on that it was all some ruse to scam money out of people i would have been found with that just as long as he gets back home to his family and friends that would have been perfectly okay um but as more time went by and as more people spoke and you got the feeling that less and less people actually knew where where he went and what happened to him. And considering it's a small island um, full of locals and tourists, basically, and you'd imagine a lot of tourists probably don't venture out to certain parts of Tenerife. So if you're a local and you see somebody they don't usually see, you'd probably be very quick to kind of notice it. And the fact that nobody had seen any evidence of the guy didn't give me any confidence. There was no real evidence of the guy apart from that one woman who owned the Airbnb who said that she drove past her now. Another theory is that he never left the Airbnb alive and maybe they dumped his body somewhere else. Who knows? But I think the lack of sightings of him was the real concerning part. Very, very concerning. I think so probably in the whole thing. So it's extremely sad that he has been, uh, for now, allegedly found, um, you know, uh, passed away somewhere on the side of the mountain somewhere in Tenerife. But, if you do watch some of these videos that they posted online about what the terrain looks like, it does make you kind of understand why they were finding it so, so difficult to locate the kid in the first place. Because the terrain out there, is it in Masca or Masca in Tenerife, is absolutely wild. This is where they were searching. So, and I think I remember someone saying, I think it was on a YouTube video, someone actually said like, the terrain in Tenerife is a bit deceptive online or via a video it doesn't look that bad but when you go there it's very mount it's very rocky there's loads of cliffs do you know what i mean it's very hard to navigate but it's also a place where a lot of people that do hiking like to go to but if if you are trying to search for somebody it's not that easy and i remember i think somebody actually said like if if you lost a phone and it was only 100 meters from you you'd have a hard time finding it because of all the little crevices and rocks and stuff and all these little things everywhere so it's not the easiest place to find but i think in recent times if i'm not mistaken they did employ i think the the family did hire someone or some sort of search team with drones or something or a very dedicated and knowledgeable search team that are able to kind of quickly surmise where he might have went and obviously now most likely located the body but this is an example courtesy of this video of a guy that's traversing up and down kind of the the, the landscape that is tenerife to show you what it kind of looks like and how rocky it is and how hard it is to get around Look at that, you can't see on the other side of those bushes. You literally can't see on the other side. It's so dense. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so it was unlikely they were ever going to find him alive after so many days went by. But you never know in these situations. You honestly, 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 never, never, never know. But let's read the report itself that kind of breaks down what happened, Curse of Sky News. Jay Slater, rescue workers searching for missing teen, find human remains, Curse of Sky News. Rescue workers searching for missing teenager, British teenager Jay Slater in the Tenerife have found the body and are trying to identify it, Spanish police have told Sky News. Evidence strongly suggests the remains are those of 19-year-old um, officers have said. The body does not look to, the body does look to be that of Jay Slater, said LBT Global, a British overseas missing persons charity which has been working with the Slater family.
Bloody hell, bro. It said in a statement, it understood that the body was found close to the site of Jay Slater's mobile phone last location. Wow. So they must have been searching. Think about that. They must have been searching that area anyway, where that last ping from his phone came from. And they couldn't find it within the time that he went missing. That just shows you how hard it is to navigate that area. They couldn't find it within that radius they were in. 500 meters, whatever it may be. They couldn't find him until many days had passed. Damn, man. Although the formal identification is yet to be carried out, the body was found with Mrs. Slater's possessions and clothes. A post-mortem forensic inquiries will follow. The police said in a statement that the Civil Guards Mountain Rescue Group had located a lifeless body of a young man in the massacre area after 29 days of constant searching. They said, given the capacity of the case, the discovery has been possible thanks to the insistence and the discreet search carried out by the civil guard during these 29 days. Parts of the countryside were preserved so they were not filled with curious onlookers. Also, it's going to be easier to kind of gather evidence, I'm assuming, because not a lot of people pass around there. For officers went on, um, all indications indicate that it could be the young British man who's been missing since June 17th in the absence of full identification. The first investigation revealed that he could have suffered an accident fall in an inaccessible area where he was found. We are awaiting the results of the autopsy. Um, police commentator Graham, w Graham Whitton said the geography of the area where Slater went missing made the search harder. Clearly, the terrain is exceptionally difficult to navigate, but especially search thoroughly and properly with the resources, the equipment and the tactics that they were using. Mr. Slater was last heard from after setting off to walk from an old northern area of the island back to his holiday accommodation in the south, a journey about 11 hours. He flew out of the Spanish island with friends on the 13th of June to attend a music festival at Papagayo nightclub in the southern resort of, pa of Playa de la Americas. At 8.30am on the 17th of June, he called his friend Lucy, telling her that he'd missed the bus and the phone battery was at 1% and he had to cut an on his leg on a cactus. On Sunday, his mother, Debbie Duncan, said the family cannot put into words the heartache they've been through. She said that her son is loved by everyone and is close bond with his family and many, many friends. Miss Duncan described her boy as loving son, brother, grandson, nephew, cousin and friend to many. She also said that the certain comments online were distressing for all of us to read. Miss Duncan said that we are aware of awful comments and conspiracy theories that are filling social media. These theories are hindering the people who are trying to help in the investigation and here in Tenerife and the vial it's vile that we see that as a family so of course it's incredibly sad that he passed um especially if they confirm that is him and that is the body and it is terrible that the conspiracy theories did maybe add distress to the family but considering how much was hidden and considering how dodgy it seemed from the beginning i can kind of understand why some people went overboard with the conspiracy theories me personally i still wanted the kid to be found i didn't care if it did come out that the gofundme was a scam didn't care if it did come out the kid was a drug mule didn't give a crap just find the kid just find the kid just find him but it being a point where they find him and he's passed is so tragic so 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 tragic and i can't imagine what their family is going through because in some cases some people would say it is somewhat of a blessing that they found him so that they can mourn him they can bury him and mourn him properly because you can only imagine what madeline mccann's family are going for if going through if you believe what they went through is what they went through you can only believe what they're going through right in terms of the ch missing child and you don't know if the child is dead if the child is alive that sort of like pain and heartache and lack of closure is probably very difficult to deal with so maybe the closure is a good thing but you know you still want your you don't want no one wants their child especially a teenager who's going to a fairly bog standard lads holiday mates holiday in tenerife the whole island from what i've led to understand and that's in that particular time of the year is populated by young people especially people between the ages of like 18 and 25 it's not like a crazy place to go to it's not like they're going to some rural area somewhere in the middle of nowhere no they're going to a very densely populated area with many many tourists from all around the world who go on vacation there every single summer they go there they party they have a good time they drink they do loads of drugs and they come back home none of them some of them well the majority of them don't pass away especially not in these circumstances so when this happens to you as a family it's got to be so heartaking you know what i mean you kiss your baby goodbye you know say what wave to them at the flipping gate or stuff and you're eagerly anticipating them coming back and then unfortunately they come back in a body bag i can't imagine i honestly honestly can't imagine but it does also sh honestly honestly show that sometimes 
that's why conspiracy theories can be a little bit annoying because sometimes the easiest, the easiest explanation is usually the most correct one. And I do remember in the beginning, someone suggested earlier on, I, for, I think it was actually in the J Slater Reddit, which has been a little bit of a point of contention because, you know, there was, there's been some toxic and maybe not, some, not so great threads on there. But I do remember very early on, someone just said like, I don't suspect foul play. Someone just said, look, most likely the kid went off wondering as we've all done, especially being a British teenager and maybe being a little bit angsty to get home and maybe being a bit worse for wear, coming down from drugs and drinking and stuff and just went wandering, tried to figure out his way home by himself, ended up going the wrong way, slipped somewhere, got injured, but unfortunately fell down somewhere where he wasn't accessible by people. And because he's in a rural part of Tenerife, many people might not have passed him and he had no access or no, 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 no way to alert people of where he was his phone was on one percent he's in a foreign country he could have easily just tripped fell down somewhere and then unfortunately didn't pass away that way so much just that very early on and i was thinking you know what now it's been proven right unfortunately so so very very sad to hear thoughts and feelings go out to jay slater and his family i can't imagine i really can't imagine what they're going through like i said like I was lucky enough to go to my friend's first, my first friend's holiday when I was about 18, 19 or so. And I went to New York and that was a fun time, but we still got up to all sorts of madness. But then that was also, you know, a fun time with your friends and stuff. Maybe a bit young to go, but still a good thing to go to as a young boy. And it's very difficult at that age also when you're coming into your adult, you know, young, young adulthood and stuff. It's hard for anybody to tell you what to do. So as a parent, you kind of want to give your kid a little bit of like, you know, leeway, a bit of freedom to do what they want to do and stuff. And you don't expect it to end this way you expect them to go away learn some lessons maybe fall in love with the place that they're going to maybe realize it's not for them whatever you hear their stories but you want to hear from them when they get back you don't expect them to come back in a body bag so i can't imagine what they're going through so thoughts and feelings go out to jay slater and his family and close friends and yeah man i hope this is some closure it's obviously going to be heartbreaking especially some of the questions that are going to come after the fact but regardless in this particular moment r.i.p to jay slater r.i.p to jay slater